What if you could battle the gym leaders in Pokemon games in a different order? Even in Scarlet and Violet, the teams, levels, and difficulty of Pokemon gym leaders are in a set, unmovable order of some fashion. And over the years, people have been very curious to see what it would look like if you battled gym leaders at different points in your journey. We'll be exploring that today by going through every single region and swapping the first gym leader you encounter with the last. What would Faulkner look like with a full team of six birds? And how would Drayden and Iris adapt their strategies if they were reduced to just baby dragons? It's interesting to consider how different your gameplay experience could have been if you had met different Pokemon and different types at different times in your journey. Of course, thinking about team building and strategies for Pokemon gyms was a crucial study for me, as I march on with progress for my Fakemon region project and its many interesting gym leaders. You can join my Patreon below to support this project directly, which will include some full-on voice acting, a highly detailed map, and much, much more. And with that out of the way, let's talk about some gym leaders. Kanto is a good early lesson that a lot more than just teams and strategies can change when you swap gym leaders around. Key plot elements change as well. Like, what if you battled Giovanni the first time that you visited Viridian City? It might be pretty neat to have a friendly, low-stakes gym battle well before you discover that he's the secret head of Team Rocket. His team would look pretty simple, just a Diglett and a Rhyhorn, which I think wouldn't change all too much, given that you could run Bulbasaur or Squirtle just fine, and Rhyhorn is part Rock-type, just like Brock's Onyx and Geodude that this replaces. I thought Rhyhorn would be too powerful, but it actually has lower base stat total than other first gym leader aces like Rourke's Kranidos. Meanwhile, Brock has a much more expanded team. He celebrates the three Kanto fossils, evolves his Geodude into a Golem, and has Onyx as well. In this swapped world, I think Golem would be the ace of the team given how weak Onyx is, and how I avoided making Steelix here to make this a team for Generation 1 Brock. Keep in mind for the last gym leaders in this video, there will be times when their team is similar or identical to their rematch teams found in the Battle Dojo, Pokemon World Tournament, or other form of rematch. When that's the case, I'll point it out. For Johto, you would actually have an interesting first matchup facing off against Claire and her dragons. A formidable matchup that would have resistance against all three of your starters, so perhaps the hardest first gym. Luckily, I would make things easier by giving her two horsies, both being just water type and equipped with Dragon Breath, which horse he can learn by TM in Generation 2. Dragon Rage would be far too much, given that it damages by subtracting 40 HP, which would be absolutely broken for a place in the story where your average Pokemon's total HP is a lot lower than that, or about that. I'd also give her a Dratini as her ace, because that's the only dragon. Faulkner would be the last gym leader then, with a team of Fero, Noctowl, and his ace, Pidgeot. The other two members would be Jumpluff and Ladeon. Yes, I know he's a bird keeper, but I think this would be a good opportunity to get some other types in there and showcase some other staple Johto Pokemon that deserve representation in a boss battle of sorts. Now for Hoenn, Juan and Wallace are getting the same team. As usual, one would be the gym leader in Emerald and the other in Ruby and Sapphire, but for such a simple first gym team, there wouldn't be any variation between the two. I'd give them a Love Disk, a Clam Pearl, and a Sfeel as the ace. While none of these Pokemon are particularly powerful, I think the Love Disk in particular would be a nuisance with Attract, a move that is teachable via TM, plus a nice way to showcase some rare Pokemon that inhabit the Hoenn Seas early on. And the final gym would be Roxanne. This was a tricky build because I didn't want to overstep Steven's role as a champion and his use of both Creedilly and Armaldo, so I gave Roxanne a team that could work for both Ruby and Sapphire or Emerald. She would use a Nosepass, Relicanth, Corsola, Golem, and Agron, with Agron being the ace. Overall, I like this team, and I think three single stage Pokemon for the most powerful gym leader is pretty unique. Now we move on to the Sinnoh region, where you would head first to Sunny Shore City to battle Volkner. Electric is a tough type for a first gym with only one weakness in ground, but this team wouldn't be all too challenging. I imagine a Pachirisu and a Luxio could make for a decent first challenge between Paralysis Annoyances and Luxio's Strength, and this team does feel like the most realistic to me out of any first gym on this list so far, due to both these Pokemon being common in the early roots of Sinnoh, so you probably would have encountered them before battling him unlike a lot of these other swaps. For the 8th gym, we have a rock representative once again in Rourke, who would use a Steelix, Golem, and Rampardos, with an added Probo Pass in Platinum. This is not my favorite team, but this was basically the best we could do given how limited the Dex is in Diamond and Pearl especially, and to avoid repeats with his father Byron, Bertha of the Elite Four, and even Flint, 
who has a Steelix, but I think it works. On to Unova, which gets many different teams because of the differences both in the strides in Trio as well as the sequel games. In base black and white, you would start off with a Dragon Challenge, with Drayden or Iris depending on your version. They'd simply use a Dino and an Axew, which I think is a good enough challenge. You would match up, just like the real games, with the leader who has the monkey strong against your starter. Silen would use a Simisage, Lilligant, Whimsicott, and Maractus. Chili would use a Simi Seer, Heatmore, Chandelure, and Darmanitan. And Cress would use a Simi Poor, Swana, Basculin, and Caracosta. This way, all three teams are a nice balance of one monkey, two fully evolved Pokemon, and a single stage Pokemon. In the sequels, your first battle would be against Marlin with a Wilmer and a Frillish on deck. Not too much to add here. Same goes for Charon as your final opponent, showcasing Chinchino, Watchog, Bufalant, and Stoutland as his ace. A nice celebration of all Unova Pokemon in a game that incorporates slightly more regions than base black and white. Kalos would give you a bit more of a challenge with a first gym of ice types. So here's Wolfric's team of Swinub, Cubchoo, and Bergmite. Again, all fairly weak Pokemon, but I think the risk of freezing would be a formidable challenge for a first gym. The last challenge would be Viola with Vivian, Beedrill, Shuckle, and Masquerain. I wish I could have done more for her, but Vivian is the one and only fully evolved bug type introduced in Kalos. Yes, really? So we had to rock with that as a race. I don't like this team very much, I'll be fully honest. Alola is tricky as a region, with famously no gyms per se. So instead we'll be doing two sets, swapping the first and the last trial captain you battle and the first and last island kahuna you battle as well. For captains, Mina is first with a simple team of Swinub and Cutie Fly. Your last battle would be against Elima then, sporting a team of Gumshoes, Smeargle, Komala, and Alolan Raticate. For Kahunas, you would face Hapu first, and a team of Alolan Diglett and a Mudbray. The last Kahuna would be Hollow with this team. This one is tricky and a bit silly as an exercise since, like I mentioned, you'd battle him with a team identical to his Elite Four team. These would be two battles in a very short time frame, so not all too exciting. Perhaps to remedy this, the Kahuna battle would just be Hariyama, Primeape, Polyrath, and Crabominable, with the Beware added during the Elite Four battle. For Galar, I think we could do something pretty fun with Raihan as your first challenge. I imagine a team of Trapinch, Larvitar, and Dreepy, but with Trapinch having Sandstorm as a move, giving Raihan the edge as his Larvitar would be immune to damage during the storm. And you might be thinking that it's a bit weird for a Dragon Gym to have two Pokemon that are not Dragon type, but one evolves into a Dragon later on, and Larvitar essentially evolves into a Dragon by classification in Tyranitar, so I think it works conceptually. Then we can swap the double battle that Raihan once had and give it instead to Milo, who could have a team of Eldegoss, Charon, Flapple, and Appleton? Some of them having Sunny Day and giving a boost to their partner on the field. Perhaps the Pokemon that Gigantamaxes, either Flapple or Appleton, would be different depending on your version as well, though I do know that they are essentially the same form when they do Dynamax. And finally, we reach the very end with Paldea. Again, a region that technically lets you battle in any order you like, but we only see these teams in a recommended order. So Grusha would now be set as the lowest level gym leader with a modest team of Satoddle and Swablu, who could take advantage of a variety of ice type moves as it terastalizes to that type. And the final challenge would come with Katie, who uses her pre-existing rematch team, so not all too much new to report. This would be Lokix, Fortress, Heracross, Spite Ops, and a terastalized Ursaring that hits you with Fury Cutter. If nothing else, I just love the idea of a type typically seen as weak or early game material that would finally get some final gym representation in this format. And with that, we've gone through each and every region and explored what it would be like if their first and last gym leader swapped place, giving way to new strategies, storylines, and encounters. Which of these teams do you like most? Let me know down below. I want to thank all patrons who make my videos possible, especially Guardian patron N. Win. I am hard at work, working with talented voice actors, illustrators, and more for my Fake Mon Region project. So all your support is critical, and every single dollar I get on Patreon and from YouTube revenue goes into that future series, and all the incredible assets that are going to help bring this original region to life. I appreciate you all very much. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time for more content.